So let's begin with the King James Version of the Bible, which is the most popular Bible in the United States. We know that it is not the first New Testament that was comprised. The first New Testament, or printed version of the New Testament, was actually authored by Desiderius Erasmus, a Roman Catholic priest who was also a playwright. And he wrote the Textus Receptus, the book that we call the Received Text and that is now called the New Testament. But even before Desiderius Erasmus, we have to go back to the Council of Nicaea, where the actual character of Jesus and his story was created. The author Joseph Atwell has revealed much more information uh, regarding the Roman involvement in the invention of who we call Jesus Christ. And this video entitled Jesus, Caesar's Messiah, some of the earliest Roman Kaiser families that were involved with the creation of this universal religion that Rome had invented. Uh, but these weren't the only people who were involved. You have to remember Constantine was involved and also the Ptolemies. To understand the Flavians' rise to power, we need to go back to the reign of the previous powerful rulers, the Julio-Claudian dynasty. Beginning with Julius Caesar in the year 49 BCE, the Julio-Claudians ruled Rome for over a hundred years, transforming the government from a republic into an empire. This family contained all the famous Caesars. Julius, who predated the time of Jesus, Augustus, who was Caesar at the time of Jesus' supposed birth, Tiberius, who ruled during Jesus' supposed death, followed by the infamous Caligula, then Claudius, and ending the Julio-Claudian dynasty with Nero, whose reign begins in 54 CE. To further support his thesis that the Flavians originated Christianity, Joseph Atwell points to the Roman Catholic Church's earliest saints, known as the Christian Flavians. The Flavian family is connected to early Christianity in a number of unusual ways. So many members of the family were recorded as having been among the first Roman Catholic saints. These include Flavia Domitilla, who is either Titus's sister or his niece, and there is an inscription honoring Flavia for donating the land that became the first Christian catacomb. And Flavia Domitilla was the first Christian saint. Her son, Clement, is recorded as having been the first Roman Catholic Pope after the Apostle Simon. In addition, there were two members of the Flavian household staff, Neros and Achilles. Both of them had churches named after them in the very earliest Christian diocese in Rome. There was a Christian theologian whose name was Titus Flavius Clemens, Clement of Alexandria. And he's the one who actually described the first Christian symbols. And he said they were the anchor, the boat, uh, the fish, the olive branch, the star. And oddly, these are the very symbols that the Flavian Caesars used on their coins. The final connecting point between the Flavian family and Christianity is that in the fourth century, Flavius Constantine made Christianity the state religion of Rome. The military achievements of Caesars were important to all Romans. So certainly, the Flavian Christians, the group that the Roman Catholic Church states were the first saints of the religion, would have known the identity of the Son of Man that Jesus predicted, who would crush Galilee and circle Jerusalem with a wall and raise the temple, was Titus Flavius. So it seems, if a person knows how to uncover them, there are actually many clues pointing to the Flavian origin of Christianity. But this didn't just start with the Flavians. Christianity actually 
started much earlier in Alexandria, Egypt, after the Diadochi split up the world and Ptolemy I made himself a god, literally. He combined himself with the Egyptian god Asar and Apis and became Serapis, the savior. Now, Ptolemy II, when he took over Alexandria, Egypt, commissioned the Septuagint, the translation of the 70 scrolls, as Septuagint means 70. This was the very first translation of the Greek Old Testament, and it was in circulation among Alexandrian Jews. Now, the man credited for writing the Pentateuch, or the first five books of Moses, is was Dorotheus of Sidon, who at the time lived in the Levant, the area referred to as Israel. So who was the original Jesus Christ? Well, that's a real easy one, guys. Remember, Jesus refers to Jesus, which comes from Yeshua or Joshua. And Joshua from the Old Testament was the high priest of Elion, who was the main character in the book of Joshua, also known as Sefer Yeheshua, written in English as Joshua, transliterated as Yeheshua, meaning the Lord is salvation. Joshua, the son of Nun, was the successor of Moses, who led the Israelites to a series of victorious campaigns against their enemies, claiming victory over 31 rival kings. Joshua's lasting legacy to the Israelites is that they comply with all that is written in the book of the Law of Moses, neither turning aside from it to the right or t from the right hand or to the left. As you can see, this is a far, far different cry from the New Testament's Jesus who promoted apathy. This is the original Jesus. Now this also leads us to another name, Yam or Yah. Who is Yah? Well, now we have to go to Phoenicia Ugarit, which has some of the earliest remnants of history of Judaism. So let's find out why Yam is known as Judge Nahar or Judge River, as explained in this following slide. To find out more about the name and word Yah, we have to start looking into Kabbalah and find out the significance of the divine name, yod heh vah -He, pronounced Yava, And so we can finally see who Yah truly is, the god Yah, the god Yam Nahar, where Yahshua comes from. And this stated in the book Gates of Light by Rabbi Joseph Gikatila, the name Yah refers to Shin, or Neptune, or in Kabbalah, the sphere of Chokmah, that is the god Yah. Prime, the first cause, and his avatar is known as Enki in Poseidon. Poseidon meaning Lord of Earth. Enki meaning Lord of Earth. Yava Adonai. This is Yah. This is who Jesus is. This is the real Jesus and the real Yah.